In the last episode, we took my cheap Maserati to specialist exotic and supercar and uncovered a rather troubling issue with my Quattroporte's engine. We also discovered some other issues with this car, which put into question the legitimacy of how this car was sold to me and got me thinking that maybe I was lied to. I've confronted the dealer about this and today I'm going to let you know what he said. So quite a lot has happened with this Maserati Quattroporte since you saw it last on the channel. And I suppose the first thing we should talk about is the dealer that sold this car to me. On the back of last episode, if you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link in the description. Many, many of you commented that I should return this car, I should reject it, I should report the center that did the MOT. So let's pull over and it will be a little bit easier to discuss stationary and I'll let you know exactly what's happened because I did confront the dealer that sold me this car letting him know that I wasn't best pleased and uh, well you may not be surprised at what he said. So let me say thank you to Incogni for sponsoring today's video and quite literally making videos like I'm making here with this Maserati possible. If like me you're tired of spam cluttering your inbox and relentless phone calls coming in with unwanted offers and scams from random people then Incogni could be for you. I need my inbox to be clear so that I don't miss any important emails or potentially inevitable big bills coming in for this Maserati. I already have multiple auction alerts from Car and Classic each day flooding my inbox and so the last thing I need is more unwanted spam. But there is a serious need for Incogni too because what Incogni does is it removes your personal information and data from multiple websites on your behalf. This is your personal data that can be exploited by criminals against you in phishing or even identity theft attempts. Large scale data breaches are unfortunately becoming a regular occurrence in today's day and age. And in fact, millions of US citizens recently were included in a very troubling social security number data breach. And initial reports indicate that individuals who did use a service like Incogni have not been included within this leak. This will be working for you in the background so you don't need to be doing it manually which will save you a lot of time and you can save a lot of money too you can use code it's joel at the link below to unlock an exclusive 60 percent off incogni annual plan thank you incogni for supporting the channel now let's get back to the video so the truth of the matter is that i contacted the dealer i bought this car from long before i actually filmed that episode at exotic and supercar in fact straight after the car arrived i noticed the engine rattle on startup I was trying to be reasonable, so I gave it a few days just to see if it was a weird thing that had just happened erroneously the first few times I tried the car, but no, it was doing it all the time. And so I did contact the dealer just a few days after this car got delivered to request a rejection, because in my opinion, that's not really an acceptable thing to be sold a car with and not have it described. Despite it being a distant sale, the same laws apply and rules apply in the UK about describing a car fairly and accurately, especially if it's actually a distant sale. So I think I was well within my rights to reject the car. And well, as you would expect, the dealer was having none of it. As I mentioned, this was an Instagram car dealer that I bought this car from, and thus all of our communications have been over Instagram in writing. Once I had visited Ash at Exotic and Supercar and he confirmed my suspicions about the cam variator issue and noticed some other problems with the tire, the exhaust hangers, and a bunch of other things, I then sent a full message to the dealer, which I'll flash up on screen now, explaining that I wasn't particularly happy about how the car was described and then sold to me. And he explained that he was sorry and that he genuinely in no way attempted to sell the car dishonestly, pointing out, of course, that it was the cheapest Maserati Quattroporte on the market at that time, but then proceeded to call me pedantic by mentioning the bulb warning light and the exhaust hangers not being in a good state. My point with those was just to highlight the fact that the MOT well, should not have had an MOT because both of those things would be MOT failures. Honestly, I don't really care about a couple of exhaust hangers and a bulb warning light. Yes, they're things that I can fix, but the problem was that this was sold to me with a clean MOT and no mention of these issues. He did then put in writing again, as he'd already done beforehand, that he'd noticed the rattle on startup. And for me, I just think that's a bit funny that he wouldn't mention it. It's a well-documented issue with these Maserati 4.2 litre engines, this cam variator problem. And the very, very common well-documented symptom of that is rattle on startup. Nonetheless, all that this dealer wanted to offer me in return was not an exception of my rejection request, but a replacement tire and replacement exhaust hangers. 
But then he said, and I quote, that rejecting the car seems beyond extreme, however, I assume you've taken it to a Maserati specialist and they have given you a hysterical quote to make it concourse as they do. Which I thought was a little bit of an unfair thing to say. I mean, the video wasn't out at this point, but you guys have seen the video now. And I think you'll agree that Ash and Exotic and Supercar were very, very transparent, very, very realistic, and weren't just looking to give me a doomsday quote for a video. And that's certainly not what I was looking for either. They were just very realistic about the fact that, yes, it's got that problem. And actually, not only that, this is a very, very well developed engine with that problem because it should only really happen in the winter when the car's not been used for a very long time and it's very cold uh, but this is happening i mean all the time my back and forth went on and on with this dealer but i don't wish to go through all of that now but essentially what he offered to do for me is replace the front left tire the one that was particularly bad send over some replacement exhaust hangers and also a window regulator for the back right window which actually he had agreed before i'd even bought the car. Now this is, uh, well, almost almost three weeks on since these conversations and I'm still yet to receive any money for the front left tire, which I forked out for obviously to replace. I didn't want to drive any further without that. So I replaced that out of my own pocket. I've not received any money for that. I've also not received my window regulator or my exhaust hangers. And I did also request that the dealer send over copies of the receipts for the oil service, gearbox service and differential service that he claimed to do before selling me this car, which I'm yet to receive, because I do have a sneaky suspicion based on what I was told at Exotic and Supercar, that certainly the diff and gearbox services weren't done at all. Maybe that's why I've not received those receipts yet. However, there is another spanner in the works and potentially a saving grace here because this car was sold to me with a 12 month warranty. Now, generally in past when I've had these warranties with sales of cars like my gray Range Rover, actually that was, quite a problematic car. These warranties prove to be worth their weight in the paper that they're written on. Basically, they're worthless. However, Asher Exotic and Supercar in the background as we speak are working with that warranty company to see if there is anything that can be done or if they can sort this engine issue for me. Now, I'm not expecting anything at all. I'd imagine it's gonna be a hard no, but that's where essentially myself and the dealer left it. He said, you know, the warranty company will cover it, no problem. So you know, you can essentially continue to make content off my dime and the warranty company's dime, except that's not really the case because I paid for this car. Um, but, you know, I don't think anything's gonna come of it. But the truth of the matter is, I've just decided I'm over it. That dealer can do business how he likes, that's fine. At the same time, I could fully take it on the chin. You know, I've bought a Maserati Quattroporte sight unseen from a bloke on Instagram. Um, obviously I had every reason to believe that this guy was completely honest and reputable. It's turned out not to be the case for me, but you know, that's fine. If he wants to do business that way, that's absolutely fine. So it's just a little bit of a shame really, but the truth of the matter is that I'm really loving this thing. And I've done around three or 400 miles in it since I bought it and it's been more or less trouble free. And therefore I've made lots of plans for this car going forward. And at the moment, I'm just waiting for things to arrive. Things that I don't really want to reveal to you yet, but look, it's a V8 Maserati Quattroporte, so I'm gonna to wanna to do something there to bring that out a little bit more. I won't say much more, but essentially the content coming in the coming weeks when stuff starts to arrive for this car is going to get very, very exciting indeed. So what are your thoughts on this situation? I still personally think I would have been well within my rights and probably still am. It's not even been a month that I've had this car. No one in their right mind, even me, believe it or not, would have bought a Maserati Quattroporte of this value if there was any whiff or mention of engine rattle on the startup. It's just obvious what that problem is going to be. So do you think I'm being too soft on the dealer or do you think I'm expecting too much based on what I bought? Yeah, that's a little bit of dirty laundry I had to sort of get out because I know that I said in the last video I would talk to the dealer and I'd update you. And so that's why we've just done this sitting in the car for a bit. But what I want to do now before I end this video is go for a drive and tell you a few more things that I've discovered and uncovered with this Maserati Quattroporte. Because like I said, I've done quite a few hundred miles in this thing now. And yeah, long story short, I've been absolutely loving it. This Maserati has got to be one of the nicest cars to drive that I have ever owned. In fact, it probably is. It's got this gorgeous front end on it. I think people have probably said this before, but 
it doesn't feel like a five door or four door saloon car. It really doesn't. It feels like it's got the front end of a Ferrari. The steering is responsive. It firms up nicely as you get faster. And then these fixed flappy paddles for changing gear are so Ferrari-esque that you do feel extremely special. And if we're forgetting the potentially fatal flaw that my particular car has with its engine, this 4.2 litre M139 block is unbelievable. It goes all the way up to seven and a half thousand RPM. And I guess a bit like one of the fantastic BMW inline sixes, like the M54 block. It's just so worth going all the way up to the red line because you just get a couple thousand RPM at the end, maybe even less than that, that just brings this thing to life. In this car, it's sort of six and a half to seven and a half thousand RPM. You feel like you're driving a Maserati in something very special, especially for that last thousand RPM. The brakes as well are absolutely sublime. You can tell that they are supercar brakes. They feel as such extremely responsive, but not grabby. And you just don't need to go far down the pedal before the sheer stopping power is unleashed. But then it does the whole automatic thing really well too, because we have the ZF six speed in this car, which I have to say in hindsight, I actually, I wanted a duo select because I thought it would just be a bit more eventful. And I, I love the old automated manual transmissions. I'm one in a dozen certainly in that regard, but actually in hindsight, I'm happy to have this ZF6 speed because it does the automatic thing very well. I mean, you can potter over to Waitrose and bumble around in traffic and sit in a car park and it will do it all seamlessly. It's a ZF6 speed. It's very, very supple, very, very effortless, but you still have enough pizzazz and drama when you use the paddles to shift. All in all, this thing has exceeded my expectations. I'd have to go back and watch the video myself, but fair enough to some of you, you commented that in fact, I did do a review with a Gran Turismo a few years back, and I was fairly negative around that car because I just remember it not feeling particularly good. I think maybe it was a case of expectation versus reality. In that car, I think I had quite high expectations there, 15, 20, 25 grand for a nice one. Whereas in this, it cost next to nothing. And my expectations were very low and it only exceeded them. So in that case, I've just been very, very impressed with this thing. And another thing I wasn't really expecting with this Maserati is it actually turns heads. That's not something I desire particularly. I like to stick a hood up and go under the radar where I can generally, but this thing really, you know, gets nods of appreciation from people. I think even people that aren't car people think it's quite a pretty thing to look at. It's very unoffensive, but you can drive it offensively. That's what's so good about this thing. If I was bombing up and down here in a BMW 135i or some sort of hot hatchback, I'd get the usual hand gestures from local folk. But in this thing, you get a round of applause and people come out to listen to the thing waft on past. I mean, it is just truly, yeah, I mean, spectacular, this thing. Obviously, not without its issues. And that is the risk you're taking with these Crouch Portes. But truth be told, despite the issues I've had with not really receiving what I thought I'd bought, it's all going a little bit too well at the moment. So let's hope that things do continue to go well for me in this Maserati, because as I say, I'm very much enjoying it and I already have some big commitments and things planned with this car. Do comment below your thoughts on the whole dealer situation. Lastly, if you're not subscribed to the channel already, I do strongly encourage you to do so and thank you in advance because it's not without your support that I can do these things. Thank you all so much for watching and a big thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video. I'll see you in the next one very, very soon. And of course, because this thing is rear wheel drive about 400 horsepower and that big engine is at the front, slip on the throttle a little bit and... Sorry, officer. <laughs>